today we're going to be taking a look at a rise of kingdoms account with over 109 million power 16 expertise legendary commanders and the total amount spent was just 15 dollars what's going on guys cheers now a few months ago i made a video showing off a really powerful 100 million power free to play account the player's name was chi he's still in the alliance that i'm playing in and i noticed that you guys really seemed to like that video so i reached out to my discord community and i asked them if there were any other really strong free to play players that would be willing to show off their account as you can see here ace was one of the first people that somebody mentioned so i reached out to him and said hey would you be interested in showing me what you're working with because you got a ton of power and someone said you're free to play luckily for me ace was really excited to share some tips for you guys to show you how you can have a really powerful free to play account but he did come clean and say that when he first started the account he did buy the growth fund now the growth fund is a 15 dollars purchase it does give you a ton of value 81,000 gems to be specific but if you guys are familiar with rise of kingdoms and you've been playing for a couple of years you'll know that 81,000 gems doesn't really get you a whole ton especially when you consider the amount that ace has on this account it's truly insane so while i admit this isn't technically a free-to-play account he absolutely treats it like free-to-play and you have to because again eighty-one thousand gems is not going to carry you for three years so as you can see he's in alliance 58 rg royal gala he has 109 million power this is not his highest power ever 1.3 billion kill points we'll get a little bit of a break town there in a second he's the Viking civilization but he did tell me that he was Germany for about two years a little over two years and recently just switched to Vikings which is pretty much in line with what I've recommended in the past usually I tell people that you should pretty much always be Germany if you're free to play and for the majority of the time that seems to be what his strategy was as well a couple of things to know about his account before we proceed this account is about three years old and he's migrated two times so he's played in kingdom 1267 in GOT he played in 1075 in SW and is currently now in 2058 clearly as you can see in Royal Gala and finally the last thing that I want to mention before we jump into the account is that Ace's Kingdom is currently recruiting so Kingdom 2058 they're a low a seed Kingdom that's trying to add a little bit of extra value they have five out of five kvk wins and they're recruiting pretty much anybody so free to play players mega whales anyone in between as long as you can add value they might be interested so if you love fighting in rise of Kingdoms and you like to win kvks then you can reach out to any r4 in 2058 and see if they have space for you and of course this plug is brought to you by ace i basically asked him hey is there anything you want from me for showing off your account in a video and he basically just said hey let everyone know that my kingdom is recruiting so there you go all right let's take a look here at the account so let's get a quick breakdown of the kill points we're going to pause it right here it looks like they have 654 million t4 kill points and 718 million t5 kill points so that's some pretty insane stats there especially for a free to play player let's go ahead and push along let's take a look this is the total number of units 7.3 million you can see very even numbers here I love that that makes my OCD so happy we have 2.3 million t5 Viking infantry we have 964,000 t5 cavalry and just over a million t5 archers with 75,000 uh t5 siege and a bunch of extra t4 units here probably for just some filler it gets very expensive to heal a ton of tier five so that makes a lot of sense he's got 54 million troop power let's take a look at uh what he's going to show us next here these are his commander view we've got Ethelfled here as the ranger obviously great for destroying the barbarians in the open field we've got uh Ishida and Sunduk as the gatherers here we have the charge captain Pakal which is insane you're getting a little bit of a sneak preview right now for some of the commanders that he has expertise we got Harold Zangyu and Guan Yu here Guan Yu taking that knight head position let's take a look here the highest power ever was almost 117 million power that is actually insane with 10.6 million dead troops we could take a look here we've got 18.3 billion resources gathered 11.4 billion resource assistant and 147,000 alliance helps to put that into perspective i've been playing the game for about 100 days more than this specific account and i have 9 billion resources gathered and 60,700 alliance helps so 
yeah ace is online all the time pressing that help button which is insane so it looks like he hit vip 16 not that long ago with a 1116 consecutive login day streak really cool stuff there next we can take a look at his resources and my god look at that 2.1 million resource pack sees you know ace is going ahead and grinding out that pve content barbarians some forts he's doing a ton of forts here in rise of kingdoms and we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, but you could see here like a ridiculous amount of resources and it could be better uh, but he did actually push for a zenith of power skin let's take a look here at the speed ups and um, we don't have that many universal spe universal speed ups here we've got a decent amount of building speed ups we've got some training speed ups not that many again this was pretty much all drained my assumption is that it was all drained during uh the zenith of power just upgrading and, and training those tier five troops we've got a lot of resource uh or sorry research speed ups here we've got a decent amount of healing speed ups nothing crazy uh but we do have a ridiculous amount of universal speed ups here like this is this is nuts dude we love to see that uh, again this is the result of basically a free-to-play player who's been playing for three years and is constantly online okay let's take a look at these boosts here we do have some nice expansions here which is which is cool i don't actually know what like how do you actually get these as a free-to-play player i'm not fully I, I don't know exactly what they drop from i'm sure it's like some event probably the 7000 gem event that you can play or something like that i'm not a hundred percent sure um but you guys can let me know i'm sure somebody in the comments will know the answer to that question um but there's a ton of boosts here like a, a, just a ton of stuff so let's go ahead and proceed uh with the equipment so not that many uh materials here obviously uh, he's probably recently crafted something huge because we've got a decent amount of blueprints um but I I I'm not sure I don't remember if he said that he was in kvk or not I'm not a hundred percent sure but we can see some really interesting equipment choices here and we'll take a look at the equipment sets that uh ace is using in a little bit uh, later in the video but just to get a quick idea of these legendary pieces we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 13 14 legendary pieces we've got the talent on the boots um and do we have anything else no that is all of it so we have three legendary accessories those are expensive guys those are expensive and look at all this everything is talented here in purple which is just beautiful we've got a nice chunk of accessories here as well we've got three of delane's amulet three silent trials one of each is uh it's got that talent and you could see that he's really focusing on infantry here although he does have um, some cabin archer sets as well um so a ton of gathering stuff by the way this is huge this is huge you guys if you're going to be gathering all the time this is beautiful stuff here we love to see it a couple of the blue shields that are talented those make a lot of sense honestly um we could see what was that three three of the lucky coins we've got a couple of different full blueprints over here that just haven't been crafted quite yet um looks like the materials are the bottleneck for ace at this point which is quite interesting we've got a lot of fragments down here of some legendary stuff nothing crazy honestly probably crafted most of what he can craft um here we can take a look at some of those raw materials that we see as well not that much here so again probably recently crafted something pretty big we can see 114 magic chests which is really funny I always find it interesting that uh players will save these up I never really found um I I don't know why people would save them maybe it's just for fun I don't know 1260 of the Ethel flood chests and it looks like 398 of uh, I think these are the pick one gathering chests gatherer chests if I'm not mistaken we've got 3,000 of the silver keys 85 gold keys 61 equipment chest keys we've got a really solid amount of AP here which is actually crazy this is part of what he uh calls the constantly rallying strategy so basically ace is online all day rallying forts that's how he does it he literally rallies forts all day long and if you guys didn't know if you have one player plus one player two strong players can take down even the strongest forts in your home kingdom uh and so with with two players rallying you actually get a ton of ap 
for the entire alliance because obviously the alliance chests have a chance of getting ap so you pretty much go ap positive if you're only using two players worth of ap to rally these forts so that's some interesting stuff there we got a sieve change ton of extra experience here like oh my god experience for days which is nuts looks like we have seven skill resets if i'm not mistaken that's the skill reset item we can see a ton of books of the covenant forty-four thousand arrows that's actually insane we got a ton of the uh the betting tokens here which is cool stuff we got 64 of the hammers from the hammer and anvil 488 universal legendary commander sculptures 1700 of the gold stars that's pretty crazy stuff here i don't know why there's a lot of stuff here that uh you know ace could be trading these into the alliance shop right you know these purple stars here obviously not going to use any of those the green stars the blue stars i don't know why he's not trading these in here um it makes no sense to me especially when you see 2760 ethel fled sculptures like you could get so many alliance credits for that um i'm not really sure what the strategy is there okay we've got 800 of uh cleopatra 559 of sunduk so a ton of those gathering commanders obviously I'm um, going crazy there and obviously a couple of just random like heads from free wheels and stuff like that looks like we've got uh four of the relics here so he went with Martel YSG Cao Cao and uh Ethel fled which makes sense these are some very solid choices I would say I just wanted to pause on his city because this looks good this looks good boys look at this I I, I love the aesthetic that uh, he went with pretty much removed all of the uh, unique decorations and just kept it very simple um we love to see it so we could see um in the top left or top right corner 23,000 gems right now which is some cool stuff Guan Yu with the absolute Giga Chad golden set this is pretty much a free-to-play player okay and we got a beautiful all golden set now I gotta say the golden shield I think might be questionable it might be questionable I feel like this requires a talent in order for it to be to like worth crafting and being that much better than the blue shield that's my you know sort of uh, opinion and what I feel like has been the case when people test these things out but I could be wrong so let's move forward and take a look here we love we love to see that this is the cavalry set and honestly guys this is a really good set like this is a really good set for free to play and low spenders this is pretty much like the same set that I use except he's got the golden dagger on here we just we love to see that we got the talented silent trial for cavalry just really really nice stuff here we've got Richard with a couple of gold pieces I'm assuming that this is for his sunset Canyon which we'll take a look at in a little bit um if not that then to kill some kvk barbarians for sure although there's definitely some I think some of the purple set for infantry has damage to barb so maybe not this is the ethel fled set you can see it's full archers and that is also because of the Canyon setup that we'll take a look at in a bit now uh, ace did tell me that he's not he doesn't really like Canyon that much um so you know we'll, we'll have to see what his build looks like there this was really interesting to me I did not expect an expertise Eason sin and we're going to talk about in a little bit what he recommends that you focus on for expertise because he didn't necessarily expertise the commanders that he thinks you should expertise if you're a free to play player. So if you're watching this and you're free to play and you're considering expertising Isun Sin, I would say do not do it. Uh, we'll talk about why in just a moment, but for him, he decided to expertise YSS after he pushed for his Zenith of power and mightiest governor. Uh, if you guys didn't know, there was the Atlantis skin that I pushed for that was Zenith of power, 10% infantry health skin and Pakal mightiest governor at the same time so he pushed for that and afterwards he realized that he had a lot of power over 100 million right and so at that point he wanted a decent garrison commander that he could put on his wall so that way when he random teleports in kvk he'll have at least something that is worthy of being on his wall in eastern everybody knows is an exceptional on your wall because he's great for mixed troops which is what you saw earlier his troops are very mixed he has a ton of every single unit type uh and so Eastwinson is the perfect fit for a mixed city of his power level and it's kind of a deterrent you know hopefully they won't hit him uh but if they do he's got something expertise and solid on the wall so you can see here we've got an expertise pakal herald obviously he got 180 sculptures of pakal for free by pushing mge so he finished him off and herald is a very uh very obvious pairing for pakal we see an expertise saladin that is very interesting i would not recommend that for 
everybody i mean i personally think that a five 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 one saladin is where you should stop uh or where most players should stop but we'll talk about his philosophy here in a moment um about that type of thing um uh, but yeah we've got harold pakal saladin uh expertise Cao Cao. we also see expertise um uh martel down here and he did tell me that the expertise gold key commanders that he has were expertise exclusively through gold keys so he hasn't used a single universal on martel or Cao Cao. so that it, that's good to know um we see expertise alex and ysg makes a lot of sense there um a lot of these commanders he told me that he took to six stars and level 60 strictly because of his ocd pretty much uh he, he said that he likes how it looks organized when they're all six stars and level 60. so again we're gonna go over this with a fine tune comb in just a second because i do not think that you should be bringing your uh you know your your Cao Cao to 60 if you're if you're free to play necessarily uh Mulan certainly if it's not expertise I don't I don't know why you would even like why would you even use that as a primary right so we'll talk about this in a second um but you can see here we've got a decent set on his uh on his Constantine this is also for Sunset Canyon so that makes a lot of sense as well this is a 5511 Constantine as you just saw so that makes a lot of sense Leonidas also 5511 very solid behind his uh expertise Guan Yu we've got Julius Caesar is expertise from the gold keys so really interesting stuff there obviously he has three expertise legendaries from the gold keys now Julius Caesar here is level 40 with four stars basically not gonna ever use as a primary that's what he's saying here um possibly as a secondary but he has so many good commanders he basically will never five five three two for Mulan nice stuff we have one skill away for from for El Cid uh to be expertise um we can see the, the gatherers are obviously expertise Frederick also one skill away down here and Mehmed also one skill away down here so cool stuff expertise Cleopatra um pretty much nothing else of note other than the equipment here on Constance some really solid stuff there obviously that's what you're going to want if you're going to be gathering a ton Constance one of the most important gatherers in the game because of her fourth skill so that makes a lot of sense and uh that's pretty much it looks like he's unlocked a couple of mightiest governor commanders here but hasn't invested in any of them now as you guys if you're very keen if you're very uh sharp you would have seen that he does have minamoto so i had him send me a screenshot of his minamoto to prove that he hasn't invested pretty much anything in him okay he has a one 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 minamoto which means he just got him for buying the growth fund right he hasn't put any skills in him so that's how you know that he didn't buy any of the other vip bundles or any other stuff like that moving forward we're going to take a look here at the sunset canyon build so you can see that the richard primary we kind of predicted this before richard primary with all of his uh equipment on there it makes a lot of sense in the off lane we have richard and martel over here we've got constantine joan here uh this is a setup i've been recommending for years at this point but a 5511 constantine with joan of arc in the uh in the back they're really solid in the very center so that way it buffs everything around we've got a Guan Yu Pakal interesting choice there we've got Ethelfled with YSG in the back row and Zhang Yu with Saladin also in the back row so again Ace said he's not a huge fan of of Sunset Canyon I don't know how much he invests in this if this is optimal for him but he did say that uh he has Richard and Charles in the off lane because he tempt he tried to do a um Pakal Herald in the off lane which you may be considering you might be thinking hey if he has Pakal Herald why is he not using it that was my question as well and you don't even see Herald here in Sunset Canyon uh, but he said that his kingdom is very heavy on on uh Richard and Charles in the off lane and if you 1v1 Richard Charles versus uh Pakal Herald um it seems like Richard Charles will just win in Sunset Canyon because all the healing tankiness all that stuff so obviously call Harold better combination but in sunset as an offlane probably not so he's experimenting with this um is this his best possible setup who knows um it might not be but this is what he's testing right now so let's take a look here at some of the uh some of the skins that he has obviously a lot of the stuff is uh just gotten from the 7000 gem event except for the Atlantis skin this is his uh, Zenith of power skin 10 percent infantry health we love to see that that is some really good stuff there that's the same one that I have on my account but 
he's basically free to play so he did it in a in a much more impressive way I should say all right now let's jump into the tips that ace wants to give you free to play players to help you get an account just like this one now the first thing that he mentions is time time is your currency okay if you are a free to play player you do not have the advantage of just buying bundles when you need certain things and so because of that you're gonna have to be playing the game and be online a lot more than a pay to win or or a well basically so Keep that in mind but also i want to set your expectations to a realistic level okay this account is about three years old and he's been playing it every single day many hours per day and he's played it pretty much flawlessly with no mistakes for three years so if you're a brand new player to the game is your account going to look like this in a year probably not even if you're very active okay so keep that in mind uh this is the result of like three years worth of work okay so i want to set your expectations that you know it's possible to have an insane account like this you just have to play smart and it's going to take a bit of time so you really have to love the game and be dedicated to it now the next thing i want to touch on really quick before we get into some of the tips like the investment order for legendaries is that over 100 million power for a free-to-play player or a free-to-play player isn't necessarily um optimal right a lot of times if you're gonna have over 100 million power and this applies to me as well you really have to pull the weight of a 100 million power player because you're gonna be one of the top in the kingdom uh and so you're going to affect matchmaking right you're going to affect kbk matchmaking and so you have to really be able to pull the weight of a 100 million power player so is it advised to be this high of a power as a free-to-play player it depends if you're super active and you are fighting in tons of wars and you can sustain that as a free-to-play player then yes absolutely but for most free-to-play players potentially not right if you're not going to play a ton every single day um you know the only reason that he's this high of, a, high of a power is because he gained 45 million power for zenith of power alone so keep that in mind this isn't necessarily uh you know exactly what he was at before before zenith he was probably around 71 million power if i were to guess so keep that in mind this is basically a 70 million power account but he has the troops to back him up now if you're wondering where you should spend your gems as a free to play player ace breaks this down in order of importance so the first thing that you should spend your gems on is getting to vip 10. this is when you get one legendary commander sculpture per day so it makes a lot of sense and this is going to compound the longer you play the game so this is priority number one after that he says you should focus on using your gems to get your castle to level 25. obviously you want to be able to join as many rallies as possible and get as many books of the covenant for free as you can but to bridge that gap you can use your gems to get your castle to 25. after that he says you should be spending your gems to get to vip 14. this is when you get three legendary commander sculptures per day and that's the most number of legendary commander sculptures you can get per day at the time of recording this after that he says you can start to spend your gems on the wheels of fortune and gold heads in the vip shop uh that also applies to gold heads in um, holiday events and things like that obviously that's a little bit cheaper than getting 2000 per head and then finally after that uh he recommends spending them on materials and blueprints now he did say that um you should only spend your gems for vip and equipment and commander stuff during more than gems right so everything that we just talked about here leveling up your vip to 10 or to 14 or you know all the materials and buying gold heads all that stuff um buying books of the covenant right all that stuff should be done during more than gems okay so hoard up your gems spend them during more than gems okay because that's there's you're basically just getting free value there and again this takes discipline okay this he wanted to stress this you have to make the right decisions as the game is evolving they're releasing new commanders they're releasing new game modes they're releasing new ways to get legendary heads and things along those lines right so you always want to be doing your research and you can subscribe to this channel shameless plug for more information on rise of kingdoms but you want to talk to the community on discord and within your kingdom and things like that uh don't wait don't wait your resources okay do not waste your gems they're very precious don't waste your speed ups on events that you can't win the other thing that he wanted to stress is efficiency right you want to be as efficient as possible and one of the things that he mentioned about this is that you want to bring fewer strong marches to the field because this is going to give you the most amount of kills for the resources spent meaning if you're not spreading everything too thin then you're not spreading your troops out and filling your hospital faster right so that's something to keep in mind and the reason that I have Saladin on the screen here uh, that's probably the reason why he expertised Saladin uh is for that a little bit of extra damage factor here on that uh active skill right it just makes him a little bit better uh and he's putting all his troops behind the best possible Saladin he can have obviously he has Zhang Yu now so you know that's something to consider he's invested in commanders over 
over time so Nessus you know he has an expertise Richard for example um he would not recommend that you expertise Richard right now but back in the day when he first started Richard Martel was pretty much unbeatable in the open field because it was just so tanky right so that's what he means by being disciplined and and just doing your research the game is evolving like what worked three years ago is not going to work right now necessarily when it comes to investing in commanders he said you should focus on multi-purpose commanders that have strong utility so for example Yi song a has huge aoe damage and he's useful in a ton of different situations right he's good for pve he's good for canyon he's good uh, for on your city wall right he's good in so many different um areas also alexander right alexander has uh the shield you can't reduce the amount of damage that he does he has synergy with pretty much every infantry commander right you could do alex primary whoever you want secondary and it's probably pretty good okay he also mentions guan yu with the silence and that massive aoe he talks a little bit about Ramses as well okay where is Ramses here it is uh he, he sends Ramses is a very solid choice for free-to-play players and of course uh where is Zhang Yu we've got Zhang Yu same thing huge AoE damage he has the defense reduction on that primary skill so just really good high value multi-purpose commanders that are exceptional in the open field on the topic of commanders the order he recommends is starting with Isong Ye, then going to Alexander right so expertise Isong, expertise Alexander then focus on Guan Yu then focus on Saladin then you can focus on William then he brings up Ramses which is down here now he also mentioned that if you're a bit more patient then he would say you should max Nevsky instead of Saladin so if you want to skip Saladin in the early game and save up later on the line Nevsky is just going to be a better primary than Saladin I mean at this point it's just like it's Nevsky's world and we're living in it okay at the, at the point of recording this Nevsky is so dominant he's so powerful um and so you definitely can just he's like a better Saladin okay uh same thing with um with, with Zhang Yu right Zhang Yu's just like a better uh Genghis Khan right he has the lower rage cost on the primary all that stuff so yeah he also mentions that if you want to be patient with your Archer build then you can go for maybe Gilgamesh instead of Ramses that's what he would recommend I personally and this is just me right and I'm not a free-to-play player so that you know take this with a grain of salt but I personally like Nebu a little bit more because that AoE right I just I love the AoE you've got the Archer defense on here and you know it's just it, it's nice stuff that's my personal opinion but um yeah he's recommending um Gilgamesh instead of Ramses if you can wait now as far as events go he basically says that you need to participate in every playable event okay so obviously this doesn't mean like spending events like the recharge rewards I think that actually just just popped up here yeah he doesn't mean like this although if you are spending in the game this is obviously a great thing to do but if you're completely free to play then you want to do all of these event events to the best of your ability he said even Champions of Olympia is really good to do even though it's not good okay so he's not even a fan of Champions of Olympia either he also mentioned that if there are overlapping events like obviously the Atlanta Zenith with Pakal MGE that was huge okay focusing on those is going to give you like double the value so that's really important to know if that ever does come around he ended up eighth in Zenith of Power and first in Mightiest Governor so he got a ton of value for boosting his account with stuff that he had just been saving just sitting there his favorite events obviously are the 7,000 gem event so if you guys aren't familiar for if you're a new player then there's often holiday events like you can see here this is the spring event that should be starting very soon uh this is going to be a reset tomorrow um but some of them have a 7,000 gem uh tier of rewards and saving your um your gems for that is going to be really good so he mentions you should always have at least 7,000 gems saved in case one of those events comes around he did say for um for equipment that he pretty much only does holy knight's treasure he doesn't really do the esmeralda event if he's focusing on a particular set so he'll save all of his gems for this nice little golden egg event which i think a lot of players really do like holy knight's treasure more than esmeralda as far as the wheel of fortune he pretty much only uses the wheel of fortune if it's a commander that he's he knows he's gonna max otherwise he saves his gems for other things especially the more than gems event again he said you know if you're going to be focusing on uh you know pushing your VIP you want to do that during more than gems and last but not least he did say that the pretty much most important thing is your alliance and your kingdom okay being in an alliance that you love being in a kingdom that you love playing in is going to keep you wanting to play the game and it also helps you grow alongside the players that you have the most fun with so you guys are sharing look you're sharing your gifts right you're sharing you want to be in a very powerful 
a very strong active alliance and you know if you're free to play then go ahead and rally those forts baby go ahead and fill up this uh you know the the alliance gifts with forts if you can't do it um from a monetary perspective but again playing with people that you that are you know obviously active very powerful but also that you like to play with is huge okay now the last thing that i want to leave you with here and this is uh sort of one of his uh little secrets i guess you could say is that he only gathers resources during the off season of kvk and when he's in kvk he only gathers gems okay he got he said he's gathered at minimum sixty thousand gems for the past six kvks and so that's not including like these things right he's just straight up gathering sixty thousand gems in these kvks and that's how he said that he's able to sort of keep up in a way with uh investing in commanders and things like that because that's all he's doing he's just constantly setting out gem gatherers and i made a video talking about that if you guys want to check it out on the channel um you can find out how you can gather a couple thousand gems per day and that's even better if it's during kvk and that's pretty much it guys ace said that uh, if you have any questions for him if you need some help or, or guidance or anything like that uh, you can reach out to him probably in game is going to be the best way to reach him because he obviously doesn't have a youtube channel or anything like that but i wanted to just take this moment to thank you ace for giving me these tips that I can share with the community and hopefully you guys found them useful if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video and comment down below what your thoughts are of aces account as always if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdom video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace